Yo, what's up everyone? My name's Dave and you suck at programming. And today we are going to talk about the built-in variable to bash called bash underbar env. This is how bash can read an environmental variable, a file full of environmental variables and make them accessible to your program. So this is really cool. Um, I'll show you what we have here. If you've ever worked with like a project in the, um, like a, any other language, really, you'd probably have a env or even a .env file. This will have a list of like variables, environmental variables that you might care about. Maybe you have secrets in here or something. I'll show you an example of it. I have an env file in here and we have foo equals one and bar equals two. So nice and simple, we don't have to worry about it. So what do we do? Let's take a look at our basic script. This is our basic bash script and it's very basic. All we do is say, hello, the variable foo is $foo. So let's go ahead and run that and we get the variable foo is blank. Of course it's blank, we don't have it set. So what can we do about it? Well, we can set it. If you know any tricks, you can do this. We could say foo equals, you know, hi. And there you go. We can set it for the duration of that script. But did you know that bash can read in that env file and make it accessible to your program? This is actually pretty neat. There is a variable called bash underbar env and we set it equal to the file that has the environmental variables in it. And then when we execute this script, Look at that, the variable foo is one. It will have read the environmental file and now all those variables will be accessible. Hey, that's pretty awesome, right? And probably doesn't have any security implications. Well, let's talk about it. So let's move on to our next example, run foo. So this is our next bash script. Here, I'll open it up with syntax highlighting. You can see that we say trying to run foo, then we call a function named foo or a program named foo, and then we print ran foo. So what happens here? Well, let's go ahead and run that script trying to run foo, and then we get command not found, because I don't have a command in my system named that, and then we say ran foo. Okay, pretty awesome, but what can we do about that? Well, we have different env files. You notice that we have env extra? Well, what does that do? It defines some environmental variables, but then look at this. It just has raw bash in it. That's because this file just gets executed by bash, as a bash file. When I say execute, it gets sourced. It's equivalent of sourcing this file before it runs the script you give it, which is pretty cool, but just be careful with it. Because in this example, we've defined a function here, and now we can pass in that function as long as we specify bash end. So env extra was the name of that file. We go ahead and we run it, and we get hello from foo function. How awesome is that? That is pretty cool, but you may have noticed there was another file in here, wasn't there? What is an ENV scary? Uh-oh, maybe we shouldn't even look at that. Maybe it's too scary. Let's go ahead and just run it without looking at it. That seems like a lot more fun. So let's run that. Let's run o run o one run foo, and let's see what happens. I'm hacking you, LOL. Your system is Darwin. Your user is Dave. Trying to run foo. Hello from foo function, ran foo. So that's fun. So what's happening here? Um, nothing really crazy is happening here. This is just to illustrate the point. Look at this. Anything you put in here will get executed by bash. So just be mindful of this. In my example, I still ran the foo function. I still defined the foo function. So you can imagine some sort of hacker or some sort of person with bad intent could put all this, write it to a file that you would never see, and then maybe execute something like this where, hey, let's find all the files on the user's computer and then curl that post that or put that to my own, you know, website, web server that I'm running and that you would never know about. Um, contrived example here, but like the point stands, anything here will get executed and you may or may not know about it. So that is something to be concerned about. So you might be thinking, that's kind of wild. What do I do about this? Is bash env always being read? Should I worry about this? Um, yeah, I don't worry about it in the sense that you should be afraid, but be aware of it. Be, know that this happens. This can be kind of crazy, but of course there's a way we can shut it off. So let's go ahead and let's reset up that command. So I think it was env scary. We run that, we get all that hacking stuff, blah, 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 blah. What can we do here? Well, bash has a command line flag. Of course it does, dash p. Go ahead and run dash p, and then notice that we get the uh, same output we get if we run it without this bash env. Dash p is a privilege mode. It tells bash not to do a couple different things like this. So one of the things that bash won't do is read the bash env file. You can go find more if you man bash. You should be able to find, I think it's a, uh, can I just search privilege maybe? 
Um, yeah, so we have like, here we go, dash P, turn on privilege mode. The ENV and bash ENV files are not processed. Shell functions are not inherited from the environment. And there's a whole list of other things that don't happen when dash P is specified. So be aware of this. This is useful to know. Bash ENV is very powerful when you want it, but it can be scary when you don't. So there you go. That's bash env and bash. So yeah, real quick, just want to say thank you to my patrons over at Patreon. What's that? Yes, I have a Patreon now. You can support Yusaka Programming on Patreon if you want to. You don't have to. All of my content is going to be free. Don't worry about that. But if you want to give me your money because you like giving me your money, hey, I like receiving your money. So go ahead and head over to Patreon. Special thanks to Fractal, Bubski, Nick, and Hawk. That's so cool that you guys are actually supporting the channel, that you guys are sponsoring the Yusaka Programming Series. So thank you so much. Uh, as you can see right there, we got a link to the Patreon above. ysap.sh, that's my website, slash Patreon. Go over there and sign up if you want to. Or don't. I don't care. But your name can show up at the end of one of my videos. So that's pretty cool. I'll link it below if you're watching on a platform where I can link. And if you're not watching on a platform where I can link, uh, please just go there. Uh, I know I'm asking a lot out of you. That's, that's too much. Just hit that follow button or subscribe. You know what? That helps me out too. So yeah, thank you.